Hello, welcome back to the Cricket Nerds. Today we start our countdown to the IPL 2024. It's a big one. We're excited. This is our first of 10 videos that we're going to make, one for each team uh, in the build up to the IPL. So if you're new to this channel and you're like, who are the Cricket Nerds? We're, we're the people who are going to bring you all the IPL info that you need. So click that subscribe button. Make sure you like, share it with your friends. If you want to become a member, there's a member button as well. Uh, so all that's to come. But let's talk about Delhi because they have a very interesting squad. And James, I'll just go straight over to you. What do you think are the strengths of the Delhi Capitals squad? Okay, straight away, one big strength. We've got Rishabh Pant returning, um, which is you know, obviously massive for Delhi. He's coming back in as a captain. It means that they don't have an overseas captain anymore, which is always, I think, a bit of a disadvantage to a team because it means that you've got a, a really sought after spot because you can obviously only have four overseas players. And if if your overseas captain isn't in form, which was David Warner, and he wasn't in form, it meant that they couldn't drop him. So Rishabh Pan as captain is massive. Um, other strengths, they've got some really, really good quality bowlers. Kuldeep Yadav, Axar Patel, Anrik Norkia, who's returning from injury. You know, massive from them. Um, what else is good? Uh, Prithvi Shaw, he, he might have a breakout year. He's kind of, you know he's really good, and yet he he doesn't always come to the party, and he's been in bad form the last few years, but he could have... He, equally, he could be the top scorer. He could be the, the orange cap. So, lots of big strengths. Um, have I missed any, Bench, Zach? Have I missed I any strengths? I feel like Pretty Sure needs to break out again. Like, he, he's he's done well in a few seasons and then, and then you know, he sort of fell off a little bit, I, I, I think. So, maybe if he breaks out again, that 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 would be the thing for Pretty Sure. I think a, a, a low-key... Um, a, a low key strength is Jake Fraser McGurk. Now, who the hell is Jake Fraser McGurk? You might ask. <laughs> he is an Australian wicketkeeper batter who is um, new to the ranks. Um, actually, he's not a wicket batter. He's an opening batter who rolls a little bit of leg breaks as well. But he had a fantastic um, B big bash this year for Melbourne Renegades and because of that got himself signed by Delhi Capitals he also made his international debut this year he played two ODIs for Australia so another young star he's only 21 years old but it's his first year um, will he get some IPL play who knows I think, who knows I do think that the Delhi Capitals squad is, is a good place for him to come into uh, because he's surrounded by some very experienced Australians in David Warner and Mitchell Marsh who is now the is he the white ball captain of Australia? Yeah, I thought it was... At, least, just... at least T20. I'm at not least sure T20, about it, yeah. Um, so he's got that there for him straight away. Um, he's also got Tristan Stubbs, another fellow young batter, exciting batsman there. So there's there's good competition, um, and I, I think it'd be great for him. I mean, with Harry Brook missing out, although that's a big loss for Delhi Capitals, it does help the balance of their squad for me because... Yeah. If Prithvi Shaw doesn't have a good season, then someone like Jake Fraser McGurk can open the batting. They've also got the option of playing another Indian batsman in the middle order if they choose that overseas option to to open. So, in terms of of bringing him in, I think that's a good idea. Uh, the only problem they've got for me, um, just going into their weaknesses, is the seam bowling backup because Ngidi is not there anymore, and yeah. Anrik Norkia. We know he can be susceptible to injury. And their only other backup for overseas seam bowling is Jai Richardson. Um, and he's also can be susceptible to injury. So and he just sprays it, doesn't he? Yeah. So, so there's, a few, there's a few issues going on there with the overseas fast bowling lineup. Um, but in terms of the rest of their bowling, we've seen Kuldeep Yadav in the England India series. We know how good he is. Axel Patel as well. They seem like their bowling is, is in a really good position going forward um but should we talk about some some 11s or 12s as we should say um for for delhi james who what are you thinking right okay here it is brace yourselves i've got um Shaw and david warner opening 
Mitch Marsh at three. Yeah. Rishabh Pant four. Tristan Stubbs, I've got as my number five. Um, and then I've got Kumar Kashagra in at six. Um, whether or not Pant's gonna be keeping, I'm not hundred percent sure. So at least, you know, Kashagra is a keeping option, but he also seems like quite a decent batter from the amount that Delhi paid for him. Um Axel Patel in at seven, Lalit Yadav eight, Kuldeep Yadav nine, Anrik Nortkir ten, Mukesh Kumar at eleven, and then the number twelve, the impact sub, I've got as Khalil Ahmed. Um Ooh. I would say that I've got some I, I kind of struggled to get that middle order or lower middle order. Um because obviously you've got to have the Indian players there. There's that as there has been for quite a while, there's a top order alliance with DC of um of overseas batters, which means you don't have many options for overseas bowlers or bowling all rounders. That mm-hmm. that kind of that finisher role. So yeah, Axar, Lale, Kashagra. Axar of those is obviously a, an accomplished finisher and he's a very good batter and a, an incredible white ball bowler. But Kashagra and Lalit are a lot more sort of unproven. And mm. I wouldn't, if I was a Delhi fan and, you know, we're 76 for five, I wouldn't be like, oh, brilliant. We've got Kashagra and Lalit. Yeah. I, that, mm. that wouldn't be the first thought in my head. Mm. So, yeah, we'll see. Um, any changes? What do you guys think? No, I have actually almost the exact th- same thing as you, apart from I've swapped Kumar Kashagra and Khalil Ahmed. Obviously, you've come in oh, right. from... Yeah. I've come out from them bowling first, you've come in from them batting first. Nice, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I have Pant at four with the gloves, and then I have Stubbs at five, um, and then Axar Yalit. Yeah, the same top three that, that you had. Mm, and nice. I, I, I think... As you say, if Shaw doesn't have a good tournament, I could see Jake Fraser and Gert coming in. I think he generally opens, um, or generally opened in the big bash. So yeah, be interesting to to see. But I'm in agreement. I would just yeah. say yeah. on on Jake Fraser McGurk, um, <clears throat> he's one of many people that we're going to use the phrase recency bias on. I think. Oh yeah, Bold. um, and I'd say that over the years we've kind of learned to not take big bash performances to be that indicative of IPL um, success. I, If I think back to uh, Matt, Matthew Short, who mm. um, Punjab got as a, a replacement for Johnny Bairstow last season, he is incredible against fast bowling on fast pitches. However, when you're playing against Chennai, um, and they open with Feek Shana on a turning track. Yeah. He was less than useful. So, you know, it, there's, it doesn't always translate completely. And that's why he doesn't, first of all, make the, the first 12 or first 11, whatever, um, yeah. for, for me. But also, I, I potentially put him in as a weakness. Uh, obviously, he's got upside mm-hmm. potential. He's all very young and everything, but he's not a tried and tested commodity and I don't know I, I think having players like that just being recency bias it might not pay off yeah, yeah. Uh, potentially, I, I see that he's a very high high hitting actually he didn't open he tends to come in at, 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 at number three but Aaron Finch was opening so he pretty much came in at uh number one um oh, yeah. so uh, but he's a very also hard hitting goes from from ball one I think he hit he averaged something like 39 with the bat and his strike rate was well over 150 for the tournament. So he he is a, a, a very good prospect, an exciting prospect, actually. He top scored for the Renegades. Yes, it will be interesting to see how it transfers over into IPL. Yeah, and he also um, has done okay in the ILT20, which is a conditions more akin to India than Australia. So he has something there. But I think overall... Delhi Capitals fans will be hoping that they manage to pick up as a replacement for Harry Brook, maybe a fast bowling all rounder, um, someone who can slot in that number eight position and be a backup for Anrik Norkia. I think that would be, suit them for sure. So fingers crossed if you're a Delhi Capitals fan that they make that change. Uh, but in terms of where they're going to end up in the table, uh, based on their lack of death hitting and bowling all rounder options, 
and that reliance on the, those overseas top batters, I reckon they're going to finish last. That's that's my wow. Yeah, that's my feeling. We're starting off strong with the last place team for me. Wow. Um, I, I don't know where where I, you predicted them to be. I have them mid table. I think they're a good side. Um, I think with Rish, it'll be, it they, they they hinge very much right on Rishabh Pan, don't they? Like, is he going to come straight back into the form that he was in a couple of years ago before his injury? That's that's a massive thing. Um, yeah, I I reckon probably five is my guess about mid table. I think they're a good side. Delhi are always up and about the top spots. I think they really impressed us last year. Um, they did better than we thought they did last year, if I remember well. Um, they finished last yes last year. Did they finished last last year. Maybe they we didn't surprise us last I, year. It might might have been sunrises finished. No, last sunrises last finished last, last oh, year. Oh yeah yeah. I, I think they. I, I can't remember happened. I think maybe they started out well, then fell off. I can't remember. I remember CSK beat them though quite convincingly. So that's that. That's all I can think about. But I have them at fifth. I don't. I don't. I don't think they're 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 the worst. Uh, Delhi finished ninth last year. So we did. Um, yeah. Not not quite as spectacular as you thought. Ben. No, they got off to a uh, slow start. I remember actually. Yeah, so I've just I've got Delhi. I've got Delhi finishing ninth again this year. Um, for the reasons that Zach outlined, I think death hitting and death bowling are a little bit of an issue. However, I think they'll win a few games just because the likelihood of them having a top five that's atrociously out of form again mm. is not quite oh, yeah. as high, I, I would like to think. But, you know, they've got a few unknowns. Norkia, one of their outstanding players, is just coming back from injury. Rishabh Pant, exactly the same story. So, and, you know, Warner's getting a bit older now and... Yeah, I don't know. It's it's definitely not dead set. Um, it's because they had Manash Pandey last year. That's why they did rubbish. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe, a... maybe that is the sole reason. <laughs> right. But there we go. Yeah. Um, let us know what you think. Let us know if you completely disagree, if you've got Delhi finishing first, if you'd have a completely different uh, starting 11 or 12. Let us know. We are so interested to hear it. So stick it down in the comments below. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. As we said, we're going to be covering all of the IPL. We're going to be talk, doing previews of all of the teams as well. So make sure you stick around. The best way to support this channel is by becoming a member um, and you get exclusive videos and some cool badges and emojis. So uh, become a member if you want to help us out. That'd be awesome. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.